Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Hack Shack. So today I've got a fun one. It's in the Mac sphere of retro projects. And I just want to say real quick, all the folks like in the retro Mac community that I kind of hang out around are so super nice. And it's just really cool. I've never really had any Mac stuff. I had some, uh, I had a G4 Mini that was given to me as a wedding present years ago. And I had a, mm, I had a pro notebook for a few years at one job, but that's been a long time ago. So, and I've never had any old Macs and stuff. I've played with some stuff barely a little bit here and there and some emulator stuff. So I always have a little FOMO around March and Tosh, but everybody's so cool. And uh, doesn't give me a hard time if I play around and say, hey, my March and Tosh thing is playing with a, a web emulator or something like that. But there's a lot of cool stuff and a lot of nice people. And speaking of nice people, one of those folks is Ron from <laughs> Ron's Computer Videos. If you've not checked out his channel, make sure you check it out. But one thing he mentioned as a project that he came up with uh, a little bit ago here earlier in the summer was this, the Pico Micro Mac. And what it is, is this cool little adapter. And maybe I can show you a better, you know, down picture of it here in a second. But what it is, is it's an adapter that works with just a Raspberry Pi Pico and it emulates a old school 128 Mac. I think technically it can do a 512 Mac too if you do some uh, different things. But I think what we're going to be doing here is acting like a 128 Mac. And there's a project from a cool guy named Matt Evans. And I believe that's where Ron said he originally got the inspiration from. He saw like a, a project on maybe Tom's Hardware where the guy had it broken out and it was showing how to do it on breadboard. And it wasn't overly complicated. But Ron really stepped up here and made it a really cool, easy way for other folks to play with it. And, a, you know, simple plug and play. And I think they've got it like this, which is the kit. And when he says kit, it's not really you don't have to put this together. But the, uh, the kit version does not have the Pico. Non-kit version has the Pico already soldered. And you can get those from Joe's Computer Museum, and that's jcm-1.com. jcm-1.com. Joe is awesome. If you order one of these, he will get it right out to you right away. And I believe this is an earlier version. The version they have out now is kind of like a V2 or V1.5. I'm not sure what Ron wants to call it. But you'll see the spacing is a little different. You can probably actually flip and have an overall maybe kind of sort of more compact design than you'll see here. So if you order one now, you'll get a little bit better uh, revision than this, but it'll work the same. And I believe uh, the, the Pico I've got here doesn't have wireless, so I may have to take it off if there's a, the software doesn't take advantage of that right now, but I believe it, there's a chance that it might. So take that into consideration if, well, when you're uh, putting yours together or maybe uh, change it out, maybe put sockets so you can change it out. Up to you. Anyway, so that's what we've got here. We're going to take a Pico, we're going to solder it on here, and then we're going to talk about the software in just a minute. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? And in addition to their PCB prototype service, they also offer PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. And if you've been thinking about giving their PCB assembly service a try, now would be a great time. Right now, PCBWay has a great promotion going on for their PCB assembly service. For one to 20 pieces, it's only $29, and that will get you a free stencil and free shipping. Check the link in the description for more details. And again, we thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, here we have our Pico Micro Mac and Raspberry Pi Pico. If you notice right here in small print, you'll see that it says pin 40. And when you look at the Pico, you'll see that we have a small print 39 there. So the one above it is 40. So that's how it's going to be oriented when we put these together. So as you see, when they're together, it kind of sticks out in this direction. Now, if you notice on the V2 version, it'll kind of fit like this. And it's a little longer this way, but the Pico kind of can be flipped over and you end up with a little bit more compact situation overall. I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack here to kind of hold this board parallel to the other and then we'll give that soldering a shot and once I get the initial joint made there I can kind of not worry about the blue tack so much and here I'm going to go ahead and you'll see that I'm knocking through the rest of these solder joints. There are lots of small service mount components on this board so be careful with your iron around them you don't want to knock any of those loose. All right, all these joints look pretty good to me. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is talking about the software on this thing. 
Now there's a link from a JCM-1, and I'll just also have a link directly to this. Now this is something that Eric from Blue Scuzzy set up, and it was a way to take disk images and do the other little special sauce stuff to give you an image that you can put here on the Pico. Now, what they've also got here is that there's actually one that's already kind of ready to go that I think Ron has shared and is up here. And I think what I'm gonna do is take that and we're just gonna put it right on here. The more manual way is covered, I believe, on the in the GitHub from uh, Matt Evans. And that's something that, you know, maybe we'll get into a little bit later. But again, this is just a quick start. So I'm just gonna grab this thing that Ron has and we're gonna put it on here and see. And I do know a few things here for this software. The sound doesn't work as of right now and there's no permanence. Nothing's gonna save upon reboot, but that might be something that's gonna change later. But as of right now, that is the case. Basically, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this demo disk. All right, so I've got it unzipped here and you can see it's got the uh, disk image here, but then you've got this UF2, which has the other special sauce stuff kind of in there. So what we're gonna do is put this UF2 onto the Pico. So to do this next part, we're gonna pay attention here to this boot select button. And what I'm gonna do is get a micro USB cable and plug it into the Pi. And before I plug the other side into the computer, I'm gonna hold down the boot select button like this and then plug in the other side to the computer. And when I do that, it's gonna pop up on the PC and look like just a normal USB drive. All right, so now see how we've got this, it just popped up, this D drive. So really it's, it's, it's that simple. We're just gonna drag this file in here and it should automatically reboot and it'll be running that firmware. And that'll be the image that Ron has shared with us. I'm gonna take this one, I'm just gonna copy. I'm gonna go back over here to the D. And then I'm just gonna do paste. Okay, and that's all there is to it. It's rebooted now. And so we hook some stuff up here. We should actually see it with our little emulated Mac system. Now, one thing you'll notice here on the Pico is that you've only got the one micro USB port. You also power it via this micro USB port, but you can also use these headers if you'd rather connect power a different way. And you've got that diode there for protection. One thing that you need that's gonna be handy is one of these USB on the go adapters. That's gonna let you plug in a mouse and keyboard into that micro USB port. And this is the one from the JCM page. And this is the actual one that I've got. And it just has the micro USB and gives you three A ports there. So I've got my mouse and keyboard plugged in and here's the VGA and let's see what we see. Ah, there it is. I'm gonna get that capture setup going so you can see what it looks like. And I'm gonna throw a little picture in here of the screen and what I'm seeing right now. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you it's powered off, got the capture going. There's a little noise in it, but you know, that's just the way it is. It does not look like that on the display, but probably because of the menagerie of things I've got hooked up to capture this. So here we go. Plugging power in now. Look at that. It's, it boots up pretty instantaneously, which is wild. And I'm just gonna go through and, and play with a few things here and, and you can see how they do. Oh, bummer. I'm not sure what the keys are for this. There's Load Runner, which is a favorite of mine. I'll have to figure that out later. Let's see here. My nose missile coming in is, right? Oh, uh, that's kind of fun to play with. So I don't know much about, so I'm gonna have to learn a little bit. But that's the whole point of this for me is like playing around and exploring. You know, I could do this on a PC or, or whatever with the emulator, but this just seems kind of neat and opens itself up to maybe be embedded for like other little projects. Like if I wanted to 3D print some little tiny Mac or something, I don't know. You got some options there, just kind of fun. It works, it's pretty quick, probably like too quick for some things. <laughs> but we'll see what happens with the software as it progresses. I'm interested to, to kind of follow it. That's kind of that as far as how it works. So in summary, if you want to try this out, like I just did, you need the following. Uh, Pico Micro Mac from jcm-1.com. You can get that kit or the completed one. You need a Raspberry Pi Pico if you get the kit version. You need a micro USB cable for programming, a micro USB power source, 
an on-the-go micro USB adapter so you can connect your mouse and keyboard. You want to go grab Ron's ready-to-go UF2 file. Power up the Pico with boot select held down. Copy the UF2 file over to the Pico and then enjoy. All right, that's it for this episode. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.